In the previous video, we saw how to create or custom NPCs in RPG Builder. And now we're going to see how to spawn them in the world. So one of the main ways to spawn NPCs in RPG Builder is to use NPC spawners. This is a component, as you can see here. You can add this to any game object from your scene, or you can, of course, add this in on a new game object uh, like I just did. And here, as you can see already, we can see that we have now an area or something showing us the area in which the NPCs are going to be spawned. It's very easy to tweak this, and I'm going to set it to something like that and spawn it here. Now, let's take a look at the settings we have available with NPC spawner. I'm just going to make things clean and call this the spider spawner. Great. So the first setting is the spawner type. And let's basically just mean that if I kill the spider, it's going to wait for its respawn time. It's going to respawn and so on. Um, if I want an NPC to only spawn a certain amount of time, we can use limited. And in this case, we can also use the persistence system, which will make sure that this is persistence through sessions. But I'm going to cover this in its own video later. And the third type is manual. This is most, this is only for developers. So you can basically set a spawner to manual. And when you're in game and only when you're in game, the button is not visible outside of play mode. You will then have a spawn button. And whenever you click this, it's going to run the spawner logic. And this is very useful for testing. I'm going to leave it on endless for now. Here's uh, the other setting we have. The next one is use position. So if I go ahead here and select the spawners of those training dummies that we use in the demo to um, you know, test our abilities, you can see that use position is on. And the reason for that is because we want those NPCs to not spawn in a random or like a, at a random point in a specific area. I want them to spawn exactly where I decided them to spawn, right? So in this case here, and that's why we just have use position checked on. But here, or spider, we want it to spawn within the circle, right? So we just have it off. Now, like I said, we can easily tweak the height, the radius of the area. And very, very important here, we have the ground layer. If you leave this empty like it is right now with nothing, your spawner is basically not going to find any a valid spawn point is going to try to look for the ground or something and it's not going to find anything because there are no layer. What I'm going to do here, as you can see, if I select my terrain here, you can see that it is under the ground layer. The name can be anything. It doesn't matter. But we will need to let our spawner know that, hey, if you find a spawn point that is on something with the ground layer assigned to it, it's OK. You can spawn it on it because we want NPCs to be able to spawn on the terrain, right? So now it will work. Here we have max NPCs. Uh, so in this case, um, how many NPCs max do you want on an NPC spawner at all time? I'm going to leave it to one, but you can have it as whatever you want. Here we have a requirement template field. So your NPC spawners can have um, any requirement you want. So if you go under RPG Builder here, templates, requirements, new one, you could add new requirement groups. And for example, NPCs could only spawn at certain times of the day or certain month or certain things, or only if you have a specific item or only if you completed a specific quest and so on. Anyway, you have hundreds of available options for that, um, but I'm going to cover this in another video actually. Now, another cool setting here is max distance from player. So as if we have 100 here, like it is right now, it means that if the player moves more than 100 meters away from the spawner, we're actually going to despawn those NPCs. The reason for that is because if you have a massive world, you definitely do not want thousands of NPCs spawned at the same time, especially because your player do not even see most of them. They, they are not really in range, right? So there is no point of them being spawned. So in this case, you can use this value. If you do not want certain NPCs to be spawned, you just assign a really, really big value here and it's not going to despawn. Now you can tweak the visual color of the spawner. It's not going to change anything. It's just visual. I'm going to make it uh, purple and blue for our spider. Cool. And here we have the override section. So uh, we saw in the previous video that NPCs had various settings such as levels, respawn, faction, etc. 
you can actually have your spawners uh, override those things. So you could have your um, spider NPC. Let's take a look at it here. Hop. As you can see here, um, level minimum five, level maximum six. You could have a spawner here, which overrides those values. And instead, this, uh, this spider are going to be between 25 and 28. Or you could even make a certain area or a certain dungeon scale with your player. So by default, this spider does not scale with your player, but if it is spawned from this spawner, it will be spawned at the level of your player. So you see a lot of the freedom you have with RPG Builder. The respawn time can also be overridden, the faction of the NPC and even its species. And lastly, but also the most important settings, what NPC are we actually going to spawn? So, so far we had a lot of settings, but we didn't really define what NPCs will be spawned by this spawner, right? So the list can be as long as you want. And as you can see, each NPC can have its own chance to be spawned. So here I'm going to select the spider, but let's say that we had a spider boss. I'm going to select the spider two times, but imagine that this is a spider boss. We could have, for example, 95% chance to spawn a spider and 5% chance to spawn the spider boss in here. So that's a cool way to use uh, the spawner, or you could just have, I don't know, maybe 20% chance to spawn a spider, 20% chance to spawn a bear, 20% to spawn a uh, deer or things like that, right? But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set the spider to 100%. Now, if you see the persistence field here, this is going to be its own video, but this basically allows uh, your NPCs, so their stats, their position and everything to be fully persistent between sessions. So this is also a very, very useful system from RPG Builder, but it is going to be its own video. Anyway, now we are ready to save the scene, go back to the main menu, and I'm going to go in game and we should see our uh, spider spawns where we set the spawner and as you can see it is right here i'm going to go full screen and we can see our spider roam move around this is all based on the settings that we created you know ones that we assigned in the previous video and if i go ahead and attack it i should be able to see it attack me as well because we created the spider attack ability and um, as you can see it is even alternating between to attack animation. This is based on the template, right? And it killed us, which is pretty rude, but yeah, she's pretty strong. Now I wanted to show you something else also. Uh, in the previous video, we defined some um, aggro link for the spider, which means that we define that if we attack a spider and if there is another NPC in the spider family nearby, they should come and help the other spider. So let's see if this works. As you can see, I attacked this spider and this spider immediately uh, started attacking us. And this is because as a reminder here, we have the spider and here we have aggro link. And here we could have any NPC we want, but in this case, we simply said, hey, if there is any NPC at 25 meter or less uh, than the NPCs that we attack or rather than this spider, which is also of type family uh, spider, then it should come and help. And in this case, well, they attacked us. And as you can see, the spider even started attacking the dummy target. This is simply because the factions are set up that way. Uh, yeah, you might not want this in your game, it's up to you, but that's a good example that um, NPCs can very easily attack each other. So you could have, of course, your own factions um, as a player, but NPCs could have their very own faction. So for example, spiders could hate wolves for example and you could just walk around the world and see them fight together you could have um, bosses in each faction and you could even have based on where you spawn those bosses in your world they could even fight and you know this can really help make your game feel alive for uh, your player base so that's cool um as you can see i really like this spider i feel like it looks um pretty creepy uh i would like to actually kill it because i want to see the death animation so let's add myself a lot of strength. So I'm not going to uh, get killed anymore. And let's attack this spider. Look at that. Pretty cool. All right, so now we have uh, every information you need concerning creating 
um, NPCs in RPG Builder, combining the previous video and this one on how to spawn them. A quick note also, uh, which I'm most likely going to cover in um, other videos, but if you wanted to not use spawners to quickly, you know, test NPC, you can go here under developer panel, combat, spawn NPC, and here every single time I click, it's going to spawn a spider, or I could even spawn 15 at a time, for example. And as you can see here, we have a lot of spider going around.